again, everybody. I'm back with some new info on the wind turbines that I analyzed in an earlier blog post, which you can find in the link below the screen there, or for you YouTubers in the description section. To give a two-second summary, though, these wind turbines are on top of the building I'm in right now, and from my analysis last time, it was clear that they weren't worth the investment if you see their purpose as solely generating renewable energy. Now, I should clarify that last time, my analysis was made using facts and figures given from the company that manufactures the turbines. But now, I have some real-time data from the turbines that are actually up there, thanks to a live feed that my university put up online, which you can also visit at another link below the screen there. Now, according to this feed, the 10 turbine system that's up there has produced 357.22 kilowatt hours of electricity since it was first installed. Taking into account the fact that they were inaugurated on May 29th of this year, and I'm recording this video right now on December 6th, we can calculate the power output or energy generated per unit time that the turbines are averaging. Last time, I did my analysis thinking that the turbines would average a power output of 3 kilowatts, or 3100 watt light bulbs, as the company said. However, with this new calculation, it seems that the turbines are actually averaging an energy production of 77 watts. Now, this isn't even enough to power a single 100 watt light bulb, which is absolutely absurd considering the estimated $150,000 cost of the system, according to the company. In fact, if you were to take this cost and the average cost of electricity in Connecticut at this rate, the turbines will pay for themselves in 810,425 days, or 2.2 millennia. While I'm absolutely shocked by this realization, and a bit confused as to why the turbines are put up there, I guess I've been able to make some sense of the facts. For example, Connecticut is known for having a scarcity of renewable energy sources, with the only large-scale wind prospects far offshore, so perhaps any local project was doomed to ineffectiveness from the start. Also, I imagine that this building that I'm in was not selected for turbines thanks to its abundance of wind energy, since there are much, much taller buildings on campus, and wind speed increases exponentially as you leave the ground. Now, I'm just taking a guess here, but this is our university's main engineering building, and seeing as the turbine's installment was probably mostly for educational reasons, I imagine it was selected accordingly. Maybe one other argument that I could put forward is that it gets a bit windier here in the winter when the trees shed their leaves and there's less wind resistance. And the past six months have been an autumn and a summer. But realistically speaking, I can't see this helping too much. I mean, maybe it'll cut down my payoff time estimate by a millennium, but it's not going to do anything significant. Well, at least these turbines have had an educational value and have taught me something. And for that, I'm thankful to the university and the donor for the learning experience, and especially for publishing the live feed. One important thing I've definitely learned is that the siting of these microturbines really matters, and that the estimates given by the manufacturing companies can be incredibly misleading. But, as I showed in an earlier post, even when these turbines are functioning at the manufacturing company's efficiency, they weren't worth it, so I shouldn't really feel an ease of carbon footprint conscience when I see these turbines on top of buildings. The things that actually make dents in carbon footprints are large-scale farms that can pay for themselves in 10 to 15 years, not small local projects that take 2.2 millennia to do so. So if I want to ease my carbon footprint conscious, I'm investing in some megawatt farm far up in the mountains or offshore. Now, there are still many people who haven't gotten the full educational value out of these turbines that you and me have. And I can't tell you how many people I found on this campus who still feel an ease of conscience when they look up at these things. So to make these turbines worthwhile and with a full educational value, please spread the word. And feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the blogosphere.